I'm Amelia, and I've been surrounded with responsibilities since I can remember. With my two younger brothers running about and my newborn sister joining us when I was ten, our small house was always a hive of activity. Could you help change Sarah's diaper, Amelia, honey? With a voice worn out from working double shifts, Mom would call out. I would quickly drop what I was doing to assist. Everyone, with the exception of Sarah, contributed. It was our usual. She was different as soon as she got there. Dad would dismiss any worries about her conduct by saying, She's just a baby. Let her be. I saw my parents working themselves to the bone to support us all. Mom cleaning homes, Dad at the building site. To keep food on the table and hopes alive in our hearts, they exerted every effort. Being the middle children, my brothers Mike and David were sometimes overlooked in the mix between Sarah's privileges and my obligations. Whenever Sarah threw a fit and got her way again, we exchanged knowing glances across the dinner table. In an effort to escape the pattern of barely making ends meet, I began working as soon as I graduated from high school. The neighborhood diner wasn't very glitzy, but it was a beginning. I hid my college money jar in my closet and put every dime I made into it. Late at night, I would count it, hoping to have enough to enroll in community college courses. My managers were aware of my commitment within a year. After I transitioned from waitressing to bookkeeping, my aspirations of attending college became less unrealistic. Even I was shocked by how determined I was to balance my education and job while attending evening sessions. The fatigue was genuine. On some evenings, I would nod off while reading my textbooks just to wake up early for another shift. My desire to achieve was further strengthened by seeing Sarah sleep till noon, skip school whenever she wanted, and get away with it. One night, as I was studying in the kitchen at midnight, Dad said, you're going to burn yourself out. I grinned as I glanced up from my accounting assignment. Maybe, Dad, but I'm heading somewhere. I swear to you. My college degree gave me access to opportunities I never would have imagined. I was employed by First National Bank as a junior analyst, and I approached my work with the same zeal that helped me succeed in school. My boss drew me aside after a few months. She said, Amelia, I've never seen someone pick things up so quickly. You'll get far here if you keep up this pace. She was not mistaken. I was good with statistics, but I was much better with people. I handled workplace politics with ease, while others grumbled about them. Perhaps I had learned something valuable after all those years of handling family relationships. My brothers, David and Mike, had left home and begun their own lives in the interim. However, Sarah, she was still at home, doing her usual life without any consequences. When mom called, she would give me updates that I didn't want to hear. She would sigh and remark, Sarah was out until 3 o'clock and again. You know how she is, but I'm worried. Yes, I was aware. I was also aware of the general lack of focus, the parade of boyfriends, and the poor grades. However, it was no longer my issue. Now I had my own place, my own life, and my own objectives. Then came the call that made all the difference. One morning, Mom said, Sarah is pregnant. The father says he doesn't want anything to do with it, Ed is now in Arizona. I tightened my hold on my phone. Of course, we'll assist her in raising the child. What other options do we have? They would, of course. Even though Sarah was 18 and expecting her own kid, she was still their darling baby. I didn't say anything since I knew what would happen next. Won't you assist as well, Amelia? Visit us on the weekends. You're quite skilled with kids. At that point, I began to come up with a very impressive list of reasons to avoid spending my valuable spare time caring for yet another child, including pressing job tasks, professional development classes, and client meetings. During one very unpleasant phone discussion, Mom exclaimed, I don't understand you anymore. 
you were so helpful once. I corrected her, saying I used to be a child, forced to be helpful. Now that I'm an adult, I have my own life. But mom family, family is reciprocal. Or have you overlooked the monthly payment I send? That typically silences them, at least for a while. Sarah's prenatal treatment, baby supplies, and continuing expenditures were all covered by the sizable checks I sent. However, it was never sufficient to gain their acceptance. One day over coffee, my Aunt Lisa said to me, you know, they're calling you heartless behind your back, claiming that you've changed and grown aloof. As I carefully swirled my coffee, I observed the patterns the cream was making in the dark beverage. Let them speak. In any case, they have never comprehended me. She continued, they say you're ungrateful. I gave her a direct glance. Why are you not grateful? The honor of caring for their other kids. The chance to raise their grandchild now. Aunt Lisa, I've worked hard for all I own. Everything. That week, he was promoted to senior analyst. Both my pay and the checks I sent home rose once again. However, I maintained my boundaries. No last-minute favors, no emergency child care, and no babysitting on the weekends. Call me callous, if they will. I had had enough of being the one in charge. Between client meetings and financial reports, romance wasn't exactly a priority. My dating app sat mostly unused on my phone, until that rainy Tuesday night when James's message popped up. Something about his profile seemed different. Maybe it was the genuine smile or the lack of shirtless gym selfies. I noticed you work in finance, his message read. I'm actually an investment advisor. Maybe we could bore each other with market talk over coffee. That coffee turned into dinner, which turned into weekends, which turned into two years of the kind of relationship I'd never thought I'd have time for. James was patient, understanding about my work schedule, and somehow managed to make me laugh, even after my most stressful days. You know, he said one evening as we walked through the park, I never thought I'd find someone who understands both compound interest and my terrible jokes. Then came the proposal, nothing flashy, just us in my apartment after a home-cooked meal. I can't imagine my life without you, he said, holding out the ring. Marry me? I said yes before he could even finish asking. Introducing him to my family was surprisingly smooth. Even Sarah behaved herself, which was a minor miracle. My parents were overjoyed. Finally, our workaholic daughter is settling down. Mom gushed after our first family dinner together. And did you see how great he is with Tommy? She meant Sarah's son, my nephew, who had indeed taken an instant liking to James. The wedding was beautiful, and married life started out perfectly. James fit into the family like he'd always been there. He'd play with Tommy for hours when we visited teaching him to throw a ball or build with blocks. Sarah watched these interactions with an odd intensity, one I didn't quite register at the time. He's going to be such an amazing father, she'd say, smiling at me meaningfully. You're so lucky, Amelia. That's when the question started, first from my family, then from James himself. Don't you think it's time? He'd ask, watching Tommy run around our living room. We're not getting any younger. I'd explain my position again and again. I want us to be completely ready. We need our own house first, not this apartment. We need savings, security. But we're doing well, he counter. Both have good jobs. What are we waiting for? For the right time, I'd insist. One child, when we're ready, that's the plan we agreed on. He'd sigh and drop it, but I could feel his disappointment. During family gatherings, I'd catch him looking wistfully at Tommy. Your sister manages just fine, he'd say sometimes, not quite keeping the edge out of his voice. My sister lives with our parents and relies on their retirement savings, I'd reply. 
That's not what I want for our child. The tension grew slowly, almost imperceptibly, like watching storm clouds gather on a sunny day. You know the rain is coming, but you tell yourself it's still far away. I was too focused on my next promotion, our house savings fund, the five-year plan I'd carefully crafted. Five years of marriage and spring cleaning still meant going through James's mess. He never could keep his side of the closet organized. That Saturday morning started like any other, me sorting through old receipts, forgotten gym clothes, and the usual clutter that accumulated on his shelves. That's when I found it, a phone I'd never seen before, tucked behind his winter sweaters. My stomach tightened as I picked it up. Not his work phone, not his personal phone. It wasn't even locked. My hand shook as I opened the messages. The first one I saw was from Sarah. Miss you already. Can't wait until Saturday, when she's at work again. Hundreds of messages, pictures I wish I could unsee, conversations about me. Lol, she's so clueless, always at the office. All she cares about is her precious career. The timestamps went back months. My legs gave out, and I sat there on the closet floor, reading message after message, each one worse than the last. Then I saw it, the message that made my world stop spinning. Baby's definitely yours. Doctor confirmed today, 12 weeks along. I don't remember driving to my parents' house. I don't remember much, except a phone clutched in my white-knuckled grip. Sarah was there, of course. Saturday morning cartoons with Tommy, one big happy family. What the hell is this? I threw the phone on the coffee table. Tommy looked up, startled, and Mom quickly sent him to play in his room. Sarah didn't even flinch. She picked up the phone, scrolled through it casually, like she was checking the weather. Oh, well, I guess you know now. That's all you have to say. You're sleeping with my husband. She shrugged, actually shrugged. We're in love, Amelia. These things happen. And now with the baby coming, James and I want to get married. Once Amelia stops being difficult about it. Difficult? I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I'm being difficult. You're having an affair with my husband. Well, yes, Sarah said, like she was explaining something simple to a child. You never wanted children anyway. You're too busy with your precious career. James needs a real family. I turned to my parents, waiting for them to say something, anything, to defend me, to condemn this betrayal. Instead, Mom sat down next to Sarah, patting her hand. Amelia, try to be reasonable. Tommy needs a father figure, and James is so good with him. And now, with another baby coming, reasonable. My voice cracked. My husband and sister are having an affair, and you want me to be reasonable. Dad cleared his throat. Well, you never wanted children, honey. And James... He's always wanted to be a father. Maybe this is for the best. When was the last time you even cooked him dinner? Sarah would make a proper wife. I looked at them, my family, all sitting there, defending the indefensible. Sarah sat smug and pregnant with my husband's child. Mom was already planning the next wedding. Dad avoided my eyes, but was clearly on their side. A proper wife, I repeated numbly. Like your precious Sarah, who mooches off you and cheats with her sister's husband. Sarah rolled her eyes. Don't be dramatic, Amelia. Just go back to your big office and your important meetings. Leave the family stuff to people who actually care about it. I barely remember the drive home from my parents' house. The world seemed unreal, like I was watching someone else's life fall apart instead of my own. When I walked through our front door, James was there in the living room, acting like it was just another normal Saturday. Hey, honey, he moved to hug me. That familiar smile on his face. The smile I used to love. The smile that now made me sick to my stomach. I stepped back, holding up his second phone. Wanted to explain this. The change in his face was instant, 
first confusion, then recognition, then fear. Where did you find it? While cleaning, you really should find better hiding spots for your affair phones, James. Amelia, I can explain. Explain what? The messages, the photos, or maybe explain how you got my sister pregnant? He tried denial first, like they all do. It's not. I mean, I didn't. But he must have seen something in my face, because suddenly his whole demeanor changed. The mask dropped completely. Fine. Yes, Sarah and I are together, he snapped. What did you expect? You're never home. All you care about is work, work, work. When was the last time we even had a real conversation about starting a family? Oh, so this is my fault. You cheated because I wanted financial security before having children. You never wanted children, not really. You always had some excuse. The house, the savings, the right time. Sarah actually wants a family. She understands what's important in life. I looked at this man, this stranger wearing my husband's face, and felt nothing but disgust. What's important in life is loyalty, honor, basic human decency. But I guess those things aren't important to you or my precious sister. Don't act all high and mighty, he snarled. You're just angry because Sarah's giving me what you wouldn't. The divorce papers were filed the next day. I had documentation of the affair, so it went through quickly. My brothers, Mike and David, came to help me move out of the apartment. They were the only ones who stood by me. We always knew Sarah was spoiled, Mike said as we packed boxes. But this is a new low. David couldn't even say her name. They're dead to me, he declared. Both of them. Through my brothers, I heard the updates I never wanted, but couldn't help knowing. James and Sarah got married in a small ceremony. My parents were there, of course, beaming proudly. The baby was born, a girl. They moved into a small house in the suburbs. Tommy started calling James dad. Mom keeps trying to get us to visit them. Mike told me during one of our monthly dinners. Says we need to be a family again. We are a family, David said, raising his glass. The three of us, that's enough. I nodded, grateful for my brother's loyalty in a world where loyalty seemed to mean nothing anymore. We were the only ones who understood that some betrayals can't be forgiven, some bridges can't be rebuilt, and some families are better off broken. Four years can change everything. My new apartment overlooked the city skyline, floor-to-ceiling windows, marble countertops, and enough space to finally display the art collection I'd always wanted. The Mercedes in my reserved parking spot gleamed under the garage lights. I made it exactly as I'd planned. My brothers visited often, bringing news and rumors. Sarah and James struggling to make ends meet, three moves in two years, each apartment smaller than the last. But I didn't care. Their life wasn't my concern anymore. Until that Tuesday evening, when my phone lit up with a number I'd hoped never to see again. Amelia, James's voice, four years older, but still familiar enough to make my stomach clench. Please don't hang up. I should have. Instead, I listened. We need your help, he said as if he had any right to ask me for anything. Sarah had an accident, broke her leg badly, compound fracture. She's had surgery, but she can't move around, can't take care of the kids, and she's pregnant, again. I sat there, phone pressed to my ear, wondering if this was some kind of cosmic joke. The kids need someone to pick them up from school, watch them until I get home from work. Tommy's getting too big to handle everything himself. And with the new baby coming, he paused. We thought maybe you could help. You thought what? My voice came out eerily calm. They're your nephews, Amelia, your family. Sarah can't even get to the bathroom by herself right now. My family? I repeated. 
the sister who slept with my husband, and the husband who cheated on me. That's my family. Don't be like that, he snapped, his tone shifting from pleading to accusatory. This isn't about us. It's about innocent children who need help. Or are you too selfish to care about them? Too selfish? I almost laughed. That's rich, coming from you. We're struggling here, his voice rose. Do you know how expensive kids are? I'm working overtime just to keep food on the table. We can't even afford a decent apartment anymore. Meanwhile, you're living it up in your luxury condo with your fancy car. So that's what this is about, money. Not all of us can focus only on our careers, he said bitterly. Some of us have real responsibilities. Must be nice, I said, voice icy. Having the family you stole and no way to support them. I replied coldly, sounds like a real dream come true. The kids need parents who didn't build their relationship on betrayal. Goodbye, James. I hung up mid-protest and blocked his number before he could call back. My mother's number showing up on my phone was almost as unwelcome as James's had been. I answered anyway, some old habit I couldn't quite break. Amelia, Mom's voice had that tone, the one she always used when she wanted something. We need to talk about Sarah. She needs help. James called you, didn't he? About her leg? I paced my living room, fighting the urge to hang up immediately. Yes, he did, and I'll tell you what I told him. Not my problem. How can you be so cold? She's your sister. She's struggling with three children, well, soon to be three. The sister who slept with my husband. That sister. Mom sighed heavily. That was years ago, Amelia. You need to move past it. We're family. Funny how family only matters when you need something from me. We've helped her as much as we can. Mom's voice cracked a little. But she keeps asking for money. For the kids. For the rent. For everything. We've gone through all our savings. Your father and I, we can't keep this up. I couldn't help but laugh. So the golden child is finally becoming too expensive to maintain. Don't be cruel. She's just, she's never learned to. To what? Work? Support herself. Take responsibility for her actions. Key, I wonder why that is. She just keeps having babies, Mom said, frustration finally breaking through. She won't look for a job, says she's too busy with the children. But she's always asking for money, always needing something. Sounds like exactly the person you raised her to be, I said coldly. The princess who never had to face consequences. You have no right to speak to me like that. Mom's voice rose. I am your mother. And whose fault is it that Sarah turned out this way? Who taught her that she never had to work for anything? That someone would always bail her out. We did our best. No, you did your easiest. And now you're calling me because the monster you created is too expensive to feed. You have a duty to help your family. Mom was almost shouting now. After everything we've done for you. Everything you've done for me. I cut in. You mean, like supporting my sister when she had an affair with my husband? Or like calling me selfish for wanting financial security before having children? I don't owe you anything. I hung up before she could respond, my hand shaking with four years of pent-up rage. The expensive view from my apartment windows suddenly seemed like the best revenge, my life, built exactly as I'd planned it without their help or approval. Mike called me one evening while I was reviewing quarterly reports. You'll never guess who tried calling me today. Sarah. I already knew the desperation tour was making its rounds. Bingo. Wanted me to help with the kids, maybe loan them some money until they get back on their feet. He snorted. As if they were ever on their feet to begin with. What did you tell her? Same thing David told her yesterday, that some betrayals can't be undone. 
That what she did to you wasn't just cheating. It was destroying a family. She started crying, saying we were being cruel, that family should help family. He paused. I reminded her she didn't seem too concerned about family when she was sleeping with your husband. I leaned back in my office chair, looking out at the city lights. How did she take that? About as well as you'd expect. Started screaming about how we're all against her, how nobody understands how hard her life is. He chuckled darkly. Guess karma finally caught up with her. Two weeks later, David brought the news I'd been expecting. They moved in with mom and dad. All of them, Sarah, James, the kids, and the baby on the way. Dad's converting his workshop into another bedroom. How are mom and dad handling it? Remember how peaceful retirement was supposed to be. Well, now they're full-time babysitters and ATMs. Mom's watching the kids while Sarah recovers, which apparently means scrolling through her phone all day. Dad's dipping into his pension to cover their expenses. I shook my head. They made their choice. Mom came by my place yesterday, David continued. Wanted to know if I'd talk to you about helping out. Said they're overwhelmed. I bet they are. The next day, Mom showed up at my door unannounced. I almost didn't recognize her. She looked older, tired in a way that went beyond physical exhaustion. Before I could even say anything, she said, please, just pay attention. No, I interrupted her. You pay attention. It was all your choice. You made the terrible decision to pamper Sarah. When she deceived me, you decided to stand by her side. You decided to let them live there. Mom, these are your options. Cohabitate with them. And I'll contact the cops if you come to my door once more. Are we clear? I interrupted her once more as she began to speak. Remember that this was your decision the next time you feel overburdened. Instead of choosing the one who always put out effort and acted morally, you went with the one who betrayed her sister. Live with it now. I blocked her phone, the last family number I had left to ban after my brother's, and put an end to her objections. Marcus, the man I had been dating for a few months, joined me for dinner that evening. He was aware of my narrative, the betrayal, and the fallout. He simply listened and understood. He had never hurried or pushed. He leaned across the table and held my hand after I updated him on the most recent family happenings. He remarked quietly, family isn't always who you're born to. It depends on who you choose sometimes. I returned his grip while reflecting on my brother's support, Marcus's understanding, and the life I had created for myself. Ultimately, Sarah had just assisted me in determining which aspects of my family were valuable. She had not taken it. I informed him that my brothers will be visiting this weekend. Want to come along with us? His grin was sufficient, and for the first time in a long time, I felt completely content with who I was and where I was going. I no longer cared about the drama unfolding at my parents' place. I had my own happiness to preserve, my own family to raise, and my own life to enjoy.